My name is Sam Dole, and I am the Tintype portraitist here at our Tintype studio at Penumbra Foundation. I also teach wet plate collodion process workshops. Tintypes are one of the earliest forms of photography, dating back to the mid 1800s, where a sheet of metal is coated with a chemical emulsion. And while that is still wet, that plate is exposed to light with a camera and then developed immediately before it dries up to ultimately produce a positive image. Tintypes and various other kinds of wet plate processes were hugely popular in the 19th century. Many people only ever had one image ever taken of them, and it was on a tintype. In fact, people were preserved after death in tintypes, which is very unsettling, for sure. The wet process was ultimately replaced by dry plates, and with dry plates, you didn't have to coat the image and expose it and develop it immediately. You could just bring around the sheets and you could process them later, like you would with film formats, which succeeded these early processes. Unlike film, which is flexible and produces a negative or a tiny positive image you can enlarge, tintypes are one of a kind physical objects. They are the final photograph. And so when you walk away with a tintype, you're holding this heirloom and it's kind of imbued with the weight of its singular nature. And the whole experiential aspect of it has contributed to its revival in the 21st century with people like Sam. Alrighty, so let's have a seat kind of like yeah, leaning in. Yes, yes, exactly. I first got interested in photography myself in high school and I was initially super captivated, not unlike uh, the man behind the camera here with Polaroid and instant photography and anything that involved a direct positive and anything that really got a sort of immediate gratification. I mean, I'd already always had Polaroids around me and Polaroid cameras around me my whole life. Uh, my dad's one of his cars in the 70s, his vanity plate said SX70 on it. That's how deep it goes. And it was around 2008 when the, the bad thing happened to Polaroid. And I had a bit of this identity crisis over, you know, well, what am I going to do with photography? I had learned wet plate collodion from a gentleman in upstate New York named John Coffer, who's kind of a folk legend in the world of uh, wet plate collodion, the American Civil War reenactor who really pioneered the uh, renaissance of wet plate collodion. So I learned from him, that was back in the summer of 2009, and then through various grapevines and It's a Small World After Alls, I found myself at what was at the time called Center for Alternative Photography, which would soon be renamed Penumbra Foundation. I'd say this is why I don't go to the gym, but I think I need to start doing both. Hi, I'm Chloe Brover. I'm the Education and Membership Coordinator at Penumbra Foundation. I put together workshops and classes, members' events. I also run um, the Fujifilm Penumbra Foundation Internship Program. I think that in like a very digital world, it's really important to get back to the materiality of image making. And um, that's kind of our mission is like keeping early analog processes alive and, you know, pushing them forward in a contemporary way. And I think that there's a lot of um, value in these hands-on processes. And there's a lot of ways that you can make them more modern and, um, we're doing just that. So, you know, when someone comes in for a portrait session, you will get to know you. Hey there, hi there, ho there. I like to block out the shot, block out her composition, get her pose figured out. So we'd come in here, the darkroom's always set up and at the ready. And then we just grab a plate. Uh, this is a piece of uh, anodized aluminum with a black enamel coating on it. It's the only modern material that we use uh, that most what plate practitioners in the 21st century use. Otherwise, all the chemistry I use, I mix from scratch. So we coat the plate with the collodion mixture, wait for it to gel up. So once it gels up to a kind of tacky consistency, it goes into that bath of silver nitrate under safe light. And it is the amalgam of silver nitrate with iodide and bromide salts on the surface of the plate that make the plate sensitive to light plate sensitizes in the bath for three minutes um, after which time it's removed from the bath, blotted liberally, and then placed uh, emulsion side down into the plate holder of appropriate size. We just load it up, we go out back to the studio, 
You have maybe about five minutes on a good day to use it because the plate still needs to be wet during shooting and before processing. We do our last looks, we lock our focus, put our lens cap on, and then load our plate into the back of the camera. I always like to prepare my subject, so to count them down from three, two, one, so we come back into the dark room, take the plate out of its holder and put it into a very shallow purpose-built tray that's called a helper tray because it helps. Otherwise we'd call it the hindrance tray and it would hinder. Developers pour directly over the surface of the plate. It takes about 15 seconds of development. And then water is just washing the developer away. It goes uh, into the fixer, which is what turns it from negative to positive. Our developer is reducing out our unexposed silver iodide and silver bromide. And then our fixer is turning the silver iodide and silver bromide that is on the plate back into metallic silver. And that is what turns it from a negative to a positive appearance. And Chloe Brovert voted most likely to slay for the camera. <laughs> You know, I think that people are just seeking something that is not going to look like what they're going to get from the um, homogeny that is digital cameras. But I think that more often than not, they're taken by surprise as to just how much handwork and handcrafting goes into this. And, you know, one thing that I've tried to actively combat in the way that I teach is to remove the element of gatekeeping. I don't keep secrets. I don't have special sauce that's just for me. I really am about transparency in teaching and learning because, you know, learning this process absolutely changed the course of my life trajectory completely um, in every single way. And there's that, that that's not an understatement. And so if I can do that for somebody else, maybe, maybe one out of 10,000 people, even just to give a taste of it for a day, long after film is vanished from the shelves and has gone off the face of the earth, which it will one day. I don't want to imagine that day, but it can and will happen. Wet plate collodion will still be a viable process and we can keep doing it from here till eternity. So I'm excited to have more people learning this again, you know, having tangible things and having an engagement with something tangible, not just in the final product, but in the process of making it among other things, it's just good for mental health. I mean, so much of what happens in our day-to-day -day lives, whether it's how we make art or how we just navigate our world, happens on a screen now. And if there's one kind of dystopian lesson I think that COVID taught us is that as much as it's good for our hearts and our souls and our minds to have interactions with people in the corporeal world, we also learn that we can actually get by and do a lot without seeing people and without engaging with things that are tangible and real. And so I think that, you know, it's important as we move forward in the world as not just artists, but as citizens of the planet to have engagements with things that are physical, to remember that we're living on a physical, you know, spaceship that is the planet Earth that is, uh, you know, hurtling around the sun. And at the end of the day, creative expression and just the pursuit of art in a tangible way is, uh, is really what we're about here. Hello, folks. Thank you for watching my docu-short on this fascinating process and the folks who are carrying its legacy forward into the future. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Sirui, who provided the anamorphic lens used in this film. It is their 50 millimeter full frame lens. It's a T29, which has a 1.6X anamorphic squeeze, providing this wide aspect ratio that is common to feature films. I've had my eye on Sirui primes for a long time. As a filmmaker, I've always been drawn to anamorphic glass, and Sirui is one of the few newer companies producing them at a fairly accessible cost. And they reached out to me to see if I had any interest in collaborating and using one of their primes. So I pitched this idea and to their credit, they said, go for it, go crazy. And it was the perfect opportunity to tell this long gestating story about Penumbra and their tintype studio, a place quite special to me and my wife, Lauren, as we got our engagement tintype capture there in 2021 by Mr. Dole himself. 
If you're wondering how an anamorphic lens like this works, your sensor is receiving an image that is squeezed into the 16 by nine aspect ratio, or whatever the native aspect ratio is of your camera, and then you unsqueeze in post to achieve the proper anamorphic frame. Most cameras need an external monitor to de-squeeze it while filming so that you're not trying to compose and focus with a squeezed image. I found the lens to have beautiful rendition. Those flares are just unmistakable and the freedom to compose a wider frame in a tight space like this studio was very clutch. Some scenes may look a bit soft, but that's because we were shooting in very low light necessary for the tintype process. And that certainly pushed the Canon R5 beyond its limit in terms of ISO performance. However, when lit adequately, the images are gorgeous. And the only real problem is that now I need more of the primes to complete a true lens package. I only use the 50 for this, which is more like a 35 mil equivalent when you take into account the wider field of view. And I definitely would want the 35 mil option as well to go even wider. I have a link in the description if you're interested in learning more about them. So thank you again to Sirui, the Penumbra Foundation, Sam, Chloe, Olivia, Gerald, Jeff Berliner, and the rest of the team for welcoming me in for this intimate look at your process and your mission. And thank you for watching in an instant. I know you know what to do to that subscribe button. So I'll see you on the next one.